But we haven't seen the last of Ray. He's down uh, back and forth in Ottawa some of the times, and it's just fun for us to see him uh, skulking the hallway still and knowing that he's still cheering us on, and he's really proud of our new bunch as I am. And I just want to pay tribute tonight also to uh, Janine and Rick. Uh, Rick, who is learning the role, uh, the steep learning curve, you just have no idea how much stuff there is to learn so fast because then you get a mic stuck in your face and you're just not sure quite what to answer. And Rick and all of our 20 new guys have just done a super job and I want to pay tribute to them tonight. Let's face it, they're the best. You put a vote of confidence in Rick and, uh, and 59 other reform MPs. And our job as the official opposition is to operate, of course, as the government in waiting. That's kind of the definition of the official opposition, to be ready, willing, and able to take over the government if the government falls. I'm glad it didn't happen last time. I'm not sure what the Bloc Québécois would have done in that situation. But nonetheless, uh, they are the third party, should I say, uh, and it's not us anymore. So, <laughs> so that's always a nice vote of confidence as well. I want to talk about a few of the issues tonight and uh, just give you an update about what's going on on Parliament Hill and what the Liberals think is uh, the way to save the country and what we think is probably the true way that we can get around to making things better in the country, point out some of their weaknesses. And I'm not here just to rant on about the Liberals. I don't think there's a whole lot of benefit in that. And I think that uh, what our job is to do is to be positive and present positive al alternatives. And that to me is what's so exciting about being a reformer, even though they accuse me of going on the rant. And of course, I don't mind doing that the odd time either. And you have seen uh, in question period that uh, it is our job to hold these guys accountable. And if I don't like something that they're doing, they're going to know about it. And I think poor Sheila has been just quite upset because she's been virtually sidelined. She is no longer the Deputy Prime Minister. She's the Minister of Heritage and Culture. And let's face it, there's not a lot of questions in question period. And uh, every time the Prime Minister's away, you could just see her just, you know, wanting to jump up to answer questions, but uh, Herb Gray or some other person does that in her place. So anyway, I, I'm sure that she'd think it would be really nice if I was kept just as quiet as she is, but uh, it, it, she didn't make it for, for winning on this one. Regarding the economy, in the Red Book too that you saw during the election campaign and with the ensuing throne speech that came out on the 23rd of September, there was no mention of specific debt reduction targets. We are six hundred billion dollars in debt. Six hundred billion dollars. I can't even imagine what kind of cash that is. But if you boil it down to figures that we can handle, we're going into debt at a rate of about seventeen hundred dollars per second. That I can figure out. Just think what this speech will be worth. <laughs> when you add it to the national debt, it's a frightening number. And the government, uh, in all of its spending, it brings in about a hundred and uh, 140, 150 billion dollars a year. The biggest single ticket item of spending of the federal government is paying off the interest on our debt. Not even the principal, but just the interest. 48 billion dollars a year. Now, I don't see any benefit in a finance minister or any government member standing up and bragging about that. 48 billion dollars a year just paying the interest. If you don't pay your MasterCard off this month, you know what happens the next time it comes in the mail. It is scary movies because you have compound interest on that. And when you're talking 600 billion, that's bigger than any one of our MasterCard bills, that's for sure. So no specific mention of getting rid of uh, or debt reduction. No specific mention of tax relief. Why is it that we are the highest personal income tax rated country in the G7. We are at 13.9% personal income tax and the lowest is France at 6.2. So we're 50% higher. They range everywhere from our 13, I think the next one is 10, 7, 6, and we are at 13.9, that's almost 14%. And yet you continue to hear the Prime Minister and Paul Martin brag about how we're just at the top of the G7. Well, you bet we are, Paul, but just the wrong way around. And I don't think it's anything that they need to be proud about. The throne speech, nothing about tax reductions, nothing about debt or deficit targets, but 29 new spending increases, 31 if you look at them all really carefully. Boy, we know how to spend cash. We know how to spend it, and they haven't even looked after their bills right now. They talk about job creation being a priority. I want this question answered, and we haven't been able to get it out of these suckers yet, and it's this. If you talk about job creation 
and you really think you're going to create jobs, could you explain to me how doubling CPP premiums are going to help out job creation for employees plus the employers who are going to have to pay that? It's going up 73%. It's going up to just under 10% that you are going to pay in CPP premiums and the most you're going to get out of it when you retire is $8,800 per year. And there are a lot of people now saying, please let me opt out. I could do the worst job, you know, the, of, of looking after my own cash and still come out way, way better on that. And I think that that's probably something we really need to think about. But every time we bring that up in question period, of course, it's you reformers, if Paul Martin does the one arm rant, with his glasses, then you know we, we've got him on the ropes. But when he starts doing the two-arm rant, then we really know that he's upset and Monty is the best guy that I know that can get him going like that. He says, new reformers are going to do this and that and the next thing. No, we are going to make sure that we have four pillars on which to help seniors to get the best return for every dollar invested. The Liberals are obsessed with three pillars. And if you've ever done milking, and if you've ever done uh, any quad or trike riding, boy, I tell you, I want four pillars under me or four wheels under me rather than three. It's a little more stable. The government at this point, their three pillars, of course, of retirement income are CPP, the seniors' benefit, and RRSPs. And that's fine, I guess, as far as it goes. But they just forget this whole other side here about keeping money in the pockets of people who spend it far more responsibly and in their own communities rather than a bureaucrat or a politician. Our four pillars are the CPP, targeted seniors benefits, uh, RRSPs again for people who can afford to save for their own retirement, and the pillar of tax relief. And I think that's the most exciting thing about it because we ha as we have listed in our Fresh Start program, there are so many ways that so many people can save so much money and keep it out of the mud hooks of the uh, politicians. I think that that's absolutely essential. Maybe some of you have seen our, thank you. I don't know if some of you have seen our latest uh, broadsheet handout that, uh, that we're working on. Monty Solberg is our finance critic and a lot of people uh, have been working on this. And it says, why is this man smiling? and it's your finance minister of mine, no wonder he's smiling because he's raking in so much cash. They say, well, we almost have the yearly deficit under control. They've just pegged it at about nine or $10 billion and bragging about that again, that they're spending only nine or 10 billion of your money more than they were spending last year. Now, again, I don't think that that's brag worthy and we want to make sure that we get them to a balanced budget. So the liberal Tory record of debt is that debt is eating us alive. I mentioned that, that in terms of spending, they are always thinking up new ways to spend your money. I mean, there's no shortage of creative ideas there, boy. And taxes, that Canadians pay the highest personal income taxes, and I've told you about that. Reform's proposal is that we would have debt reduction and tax relief must be higher priorities. And of course, they just laugh at us every time we talk about that. In terms of spending, hold the line on spending and eliminate waste. That is the important part, that there is just so many billions of dollars that we could uh, knock out of the system there. We are offering a $94 billion government rather than a $120 billion government. I still think you can get a pile of government for $94 billion, don't you? Uh, you know, I, th I think we could manage on that somehow. And taxes, lower taxes would put more money back in your hands. Families are a priority. We think that families are uh, not taxed fairly right now. Why is it that if somebody chooses to stay at home and raise one of their kids or, or all their kids at home, if one parent stays there, why should they be penalized under the tax system? Paul Martin continually attacks us saying that it's just absolutely ridiculous that reform wants to just look after the rich. No, our tax relief proposals would take 1.3 million families off the federal tax rolls altogether. And I think that's the exciting part where young people and young couples who are having children would be far, far better off under our system. And we think that that's really good. In terms of pension plan, let's start with the MP pension plan. Well, isn't that something? We've asked Paul Martin about it and said, well, what, uh, he says, we think pensions should be fair and reasonable. Yeah, me too, Paul. How about yours? 